This video contains segments of flashing lights, so if you are susceptible to those, then either don't watch the video or just turn away when the flashing lights come up. Hey everybody! Well, today we're going to take a look at another obscure but cool screen-used prop from a television show. So this device here was used in the TV show called Debris, which was on NBC, and uh, unfortunately the show only lasted 13 episodes, which, I don't know, so many of these network shows, they never give the show a chance to find an audience, and, and that's kind of the case with this show, I think. Now, full disclosure here, I never even saw the show either, because I never knew it even existed. I rarely watch a lot of commercial TV anymore. But if I had known about this show, I would have watched it because it sounds like something I would have definitely watched. So um, I'm guessing that the premise of the show is that pieces of debris had fallen down from uh, space. I don't know if they were a piece of a, an alien spacecraft or just um, space material. But these fragments, these debris pieces, had different properties that would affect people in different ways. And there is a few clips that I managed to catch on the internet. Uh, you know, one of them showed this lady that was kind of, she was dead, but yet she was floating and she'd gotten caught on a barb, barbed wire fence. And um, other things where I, it kind of takes over people's minds or something. I'm not really sure the whole premise of the story. But in the 13th episode, uh, this show was produced by the same people that did Fringe. For those of you who watched Fringe, um, in fact, I'm just now finishing up the first season of that show because uh, I watched the first season many years ago and then I never got a chance to watch the rest of it. I found out they're streaming it on the IMDb uh, network and so I've been watching it. And the show has got John Noble in it, who was an excellent actor. He's so good as the character of Walter. Well, uh, lo and behold, he shows up in this show, which is Debris, and he was kind of like a, a surprise guest um, for this, uh, for that show, it was supposed to be like a maybe a surprise, or I don't know if it was necessarily a cliffhanger since it was only the thirteenth episode. But um, it's really cool because John Noble actually handles this prop. There is a couple of screen grabs that I managed to find. There's only about three, and he's actually uh, holding it, you know, from this side over here. There's another one where he's uh, cradling this in his arm, and he's either talking to somebody from the show, or maybe it was a character. And then there's another one where he's actually activating the button on top of here. So we're going to take a look at this. Now, as you can see, it's, uh, it's got some weight to it. This is an aluminum tube, and it's, it's long. This thing is long, and it's got some weight to it. It's got this little window in the front, and I'll get a close-up view of it. And it also has this little switch on the top right there. So it does have some electronics to it. Here's what the bottom of it looks like. So it's a very cool piece. Now, I got this at an auction from Propabilia. They were selling a few pieces from uh, um, this debris show. They also have some things from the new Netflix, uh, Lost in Space, which I would like to get a hold of. I hope more stuff, you know, shows up for that auction as well. This prop also came with this. It's a little remote control because this little thing lights up right here and it, you can change the color using the, uh, the remote right here. And it's pretty cool. Now it says auto light tube. Otto was the name of the character that John Noble plays in um, Debris, and here you can see it says scanner tube and auto light. Now I don't know if that was written by the people that worked on the show or if it was from the uh, the auction house that did it. I'm not really sure, but uh, let's take a look at some clips or at least let's look at some uh, screen grabs from the show. Okay, so here is John Noble as the character of Otto holding this piece right here. Now, uh, you can see that this is the exact same piece that they made for uh, the show. I'm assuming that they only had the one hero piece. And this one, you can see the window right here where that light's gonna be. And that's really cool. So he's actually holding it right there. And uh, I think this was some kind of a device that was supposed to emit some kind of a pulse that would um, interrupt what was happening with a bunch of people that were out in this rock quarry area. All these people were being affected by the debris pieces. And um, I think that if they tried to uh, somehow counteract that the, the reactions that were happening with these people, it would wipe their memories. So I'm guessing that this device would help alleviate all that and they could still keep their memories. At least that's my guess anyway. Here's another screen grab from the episode. 
So John Noble only appeared in the last episode of the show. Uh, now, I don't know if this is a behind the scenes shot or what, because it looks like he's kind of smiling right here. You can see that he's kind of cradling that tube right there. Um, the other actor back here looks like he's doing something, you know, like a scene. So I don't know if this is a director or if it's actually another actor in the show. I'm not really sure. Um, I'm guessing that this is just a, a screen grab from the actual episode. But it's kind of cool that he's actually cradling it in his arm right there. And this is the final screen grab that I could find. Uh, you can see he's wearing these goggles, which were similar to something that he wore in Fringe as well. But he's actually activating the button on the very top. You can see he's pushing that button on there. And you can kind of slightly see there's a blue light in that little window right there, which is really cool. So, yeah. I would love to see this episode. I can't find it. Well, I can find it online, but you have to go to uh, websites where you have to register to uh, subscribe to these channels and pay the money and stuff like that. It's not even on NBC's website. I checked and they, they have what looks like the episode, but when you click on it, it says that it's no longer available, which is just odd to me. It's an NBC show. Why wouldn't they still have it? So it's very odd. I'm hoping some of these end up on YouTube somewhere and I can actually see the scene. I just want to watch the last episode where this thing appears. I really want to see what this thing was supposed to do in the episode. But you can see he's out in the middle of this kind of rock quarry area. But it's really cool that John Noble actually uh, interacted with that piece. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this now. So yes, this is a metal tube, uh, aluminum. You can see there's scratches kind of all over it. Here's that window. You can kind of see how that looks. So the uh, light white area around the outside is a light. And it looks like it's kind of coming loose right there. And I think it's because probably several people have gripped it and pushed down on this. And I'm worried that that's going to fall inside. So I may glue that just to make sure it stays in place. I really don't want that falling in because I don't know how I'd repair it. You can see some more scratches going on here, which is typical of props. You know, they get used and beat up during production. And afterwards, you know, sometimes they, uh, if they're not planning on using it again, they just get tossed into some kind of a bin or thrown out, whichever the case, but you can see this has definitely got some uh, wear on it. But it's a really nice tube, it's really cool, it's very sleek. Here is the top, and now you can see, well let me see if I can get some better light on here. But yeah, there's that button, and there's a little light right there, and it turns red when you push it on, and I will activate this so we can see. You can see how the top here, see that little uh, seam? So it looks like they may have, um, you know, like glued on that top section which I'm guessing they had to have done because that's the only way I would think that they could attach this because, you know, it's a shorter distance from the top than it is from the bottom. How else would they have been able to attach that? So it's pretty cool. Here's the bottom of this thing. And I was trying to figure out, you know, how this was attached because I saw a picture that the batteries are under here. So uh, let me show you how they actually achieved that. It's pretty cool. Okay, so I thought this was pretty clever how they figured out how to make the batteries accessible down here. I thought, you know, you're going to have to put some kind of sharp knife or something in here to pop this bottom off, but it's not that way at all. You just push. See how this is loose like that? When you push on it, you got a little finger hole right here, and this comes off just like this. And there are the batteries on the inside. So it uses two end-sized batteries. And here you can see the uh, magnets that attach to the bottom lid right here. And this lid is kind of cool too. It's actually, uh, it's, I think it's plastic, as far as I can tell. I mean, that feels like plastic, but it's like really thin right here where the finger hole is. But yet this, I can't tell how they made this. It almost looks like it's a chrome plastic or something on here. I'm not really sure. And same with this. I mean, you can tell that's plastic too, because if you look closely, you can kind of see some waviness in there, uh, if I can get the light on it just right, where you can kind of tell that it's um, it's not metal. I mean, it's awfully light, you can tell. But I think that's really cool. Now, on the piece itself, you can see that that is 3D printed. See the 3D print lines on here? And I don't know if this is a separate piece from this one. These ones kind of run diagonal, while the one here runs horizontal, and you can see the magnets on there. I am always fascinated at how the prop guys make props for TV shows. Whenever I get an actual piece like this, it's fascinating to watch how they constructed it. I mean, how do they figure this out? Now, you'll notice also, um, this is at an angle right here while this is flat. And that's how this thing, that's how the lid stays in place. So uh, when you have this on here, 
it just clicks in there. But because that angle's there, that's what allows you to flip that open to get easy access to the batteries, which I think is absolutely ingenious. All right, well, let's turn this on so I can show you what the lighting effects look like. Okay, so I turned the lights down so we can see the light here better. So we're gonna push this activation button right up here. And here you can see that turns blue on the top here. You can see that little red light right there. And that blue looks really cool. I don't know if it's showing on camera as brilliantly as it looks right here, but that's, that looks really neat. And that's how it looked in that episode. Okay, so now we got the remote here and from here we can change colors. You have all these different colors that you can use. And I've seen these kind of things before for other things, but let's try purple. You can see that's got the purple light on there. This is more of a uh, deeper purple. And that one's a slight different shade of purple. I don't know if you can tell on camera. I'm not really sure it's doing it justice here. Um, here's some blue. Let me see if I zoom in on it, if we can kind of see it a little better. Okay, so closer up now, we might be able to see it a little better. Okay, so there's that kind of purple. Yeah, it looks better when it's close up like this. Now it's not doing that waving that you're seeing on there. That's just the camera having a hard time checking that out, but it does look kind of cool. There's kind of a, a deepish bluish purple there. That blue looks really good. I really like the way that one looks. Uh, this is kind of a green, light green, lime green. It's more of a yellow. That is kind of a uh, lemon yellow, I would say. There's some kind of an orange and the red. The red looks really good too. So now there's some other uh, cool little things you can do with this. There's a, uh, let's see, there's a flasher. Look at that. That's kind of really cool. And then there's a, uh, let's see, what is this one called? Face. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, fade. I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, that's cool. Look at that. It fades from color to color. Uh, once again, that waviness is just the camera having a hard time focusing on that. Uh, let's see, this is strobe. So the light is more of a white or a very, very light blue. And then this is flash, which is very similar. Let me see, is that the same as the other one? Yeah, it's very similar. So I don't know if they used any, any of these effects in that episode. Like I said, God, I, I really want to see that episode. If any of you know where I can see this episode, uh, where I don't have to pay for a subscription thing, or it's just somewhere on the internet, please let me know, because I've looked everywhere and I can't find it. But uh, yeah, I'd really like to see. I mean, this is really cool. I can see why the prop guys decided to go this route, so that in case the director decides that he wants to, uh, he or she, wants to, um, you know, change the color of this or do the effect of whatever the uh, rays or whatever that it's, you know, emitting. then especially something like that, that's really cool. It looks like it might be, you know, like a high intensity thing or even like the slow pulse right there. But yeah, that's really nice. Really, really nice. Yep, I love it. That blue right there, that's probably my favorite. Although it looks much darker on camera than it does in person, but it's very, very cool. In case you're curious as to what was on the inside, because I know I was, uh, I went ahead and took the cover off on the bottom and you can see all that's in there. Just some uh, basic wiring, it looks like. There's a plug. I don't know if you can see it hanging right there. Doesn't look like it really goes to anything. You can see the large unit right here that is the uh, little window. And thankfully, uh, my hand can fit in here. So I was able to push that piece back out because remember how the window was saying there was a gap right there? So thankfully I was able to push that back against the uh, tube and I put a couple of drops of Gorilla Glue just to make sure it stayed in place. If you look at the very top um, back there, you can kind of see there's what looks like some epoxy down there. Uh, some just a little bit of wiring. Let me turn on the light so you can see what that looks like. All right, so let me hit this switch. Let's see, where is it? It's right here. And now you can see, look how bright that unit is right in there. That thing's really bright. Let me see if I turn down the light right here. And uh, maybe you can see it a little better. See, that's a really bright, bright thing. It lights up the entire interior of the, uh, the tube. 
It's very, very cool. You know, they put a lot of work into this and it, it's kind of amazing to me. Here's this plastic piece. It's probably 3D printed, but it's actually the little uh, holder for, you know, the top, the bottom section right here for the batteries. And uh, probably just glued or epoxy to the side, I'm guessing. I don't know. But, you know, it's, it's amazing the work that goes into a simple prop that, you know, maybe only used for a few seconds or, you know, a minute in a TV show or movie, but all the work that goes into it. I've always said that the prop guys are absolute geniuses to come up with this stuff. And it just always makes me, uh, I don't know, just amazed at the work that they do. It's very, very cool. Okay, so now that I've pushed that piece back out, see how the, uh, the color band is even and flush with the aluminum now, with the tube? That's how it was supposed to be. So, yeah, it definitely got pushed in. So uh, I'm glad I was able to fix that because it didn't even, didn't even look this good in the auction photos. So, yeah, thank goodness I was able to repair that. And it looks really good. Ah, oh, thank goodness. This prop also comes with a certificate of authenticity from Propabilia. And it has the little registry number on there. It says it's from Debris. And if you look in the light, you can see there's actually an embossed stamp right there. So that's very cool. Yeah, COAs, I don't know, there some people are uh, kind of hit and miss with these. I mean, the, you know, certificate, certificates of authenticity can always be faked. There's that uh, stamp, but that does help right there. But, um, you know, you got to know where you're buying this kind of stuff. If you buy props like I do, you got to know who you're buying it from, where it comes from, uh, some history about where it came from. And uh, like I mentioned in some of my other videos, I used to be able to get a lot of these props from uh, the people that actually worked on the shows or the movies back in the day because props really weren't thought of as anything valuable. So there we go. That is Otto's Influx Cylinder Device from the TV show Debris. And it is really cool to have this piece, mainly because uh, John Noble touched it, <laughs> which I think is really neat. I'm a big fan of his. I think he's an excellent actor. He was so good in Fringe. Wish I could have seen this episode that this thing was used in. And it's a shame that the show, Debris, only lasted 13 episodes. But uh, at least this thing survived, and at least I was able to get it. This is the first time I've gotten a prop that was used so close to the time that it was actually used in production. So this is December of 2021, and the episode, the last episode of Debris, aired in May of 2021. And it was probably filmed in April, so it was probably just about eight months ago that they used this thing. So it's pretty unusual. Um, I did clean it up. The thing was filthy. It had fingerprints all over it. There's probably a hundred different people that has handled this thing. And it was out in that rock quarry. So it just was really dirty when I cleaned it up. And I also uh, changed the batteries. You can see the lights are really nice now. They totally died. I thought it used N batteries, but it actually used A23 batteries. And so I got a couple of those and now it's going nice and bright. And I really love it. I really love these obscure props, especially electronic devices and gadgets. And I always have such appreciation for the prop people that make these kinds of things because it's just cool. They take up, you know, found objects and turn it into some cool looking, beautiful thing you've never seen before. And I'm glad this survived. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you did, don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks again and have a good one.